Hey folks, Gwei. Today, I want to talk about a speech that I, that I caught. Now, I found this speech through the Rational National. Uh, it's a great speech by uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados, a person, a very intelligent person by the name of Mia Amor Motley. She's also the Minister for National Security and Civil Service and the Minister for Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment in her country. She was invited to speak at the UN. And she, while standing there, she asked the question, how long? A lot. How long do we have to wait? How long before we act? How long before we do the right thing? How long before we share? How long before we equip? How long before we support? How long before we change? How long before we make the needed investments? I've included a copy of, or I've included a link in the comments. Please take a look. It is well worth the time. It runs about 17 minutes. It is worth every second. As she was speaking, she gets to a place in the speech where she says, you know, with all this stuff that needs to be done, we have the means to solve these problems. We have the means to take care, to act, to take care of the crises that we're facing. We have the means, we have the wealth, we have the ability. What she says is, we lack the will. We lack the will. Now, I'm a fan of Rule 303 big fan of Rule 303. You know what it says, if you have the means, you have the responsibility. I believe that Rule 303 speaks into the Christian heart. I believe it's a reiteration of exactly what Jesus tells us to do in the Gospels, especially in that story of the Good Samaritan. You know, the one where the guy comes along, finds a fellow that's been beaten and uh, thrown into a ditch. Despite the fact that two other people have walked past him, this guy stops, picks him up, takes him, to, takes him to a place where he can get well and pays all the costs. Not because he knew him, but because it was the right thing to do. He had the ability and he did what needed to be done to take care of this man. But it's not just found there. It's found throughout the spirit of the gospel. She says in her speech that we as nations, especially I think she's pointing towards, you know, the first world nations, we have the means to alleviate the suffering of this world. We have the means to, to deal with what's happening. And, and she lists several different things that are happening right now, several, several different issues that need to be addressed. And she says, we have the means, but we are choosing not to do anything about it. We are choosing not to do enough. In essence, we're choosing to allow those things to continue. We're choosing to allow those things to get worse. We're choosing to allow people to die. We're choosing to allow people to be misinformed. We're choosing to allow people to be oppressed. We're choosing to allow people to suffer injustice. We're choosing to allow people to suffer poverty. We're choosing to allow, literally, to allow island nation states to disappear. These are harsh words. As a person living in Canada, these are harsh words. As a Christian living in Canada, these are harsh words. And these words, I would argue, spoken by a modern day prophet, they cut to the bone. And they demand that I answer to God. Am I doing what I am able to do? Am I using the gifts and the skills and the wealth that God has provided to me, am I using those things, my means, and accepting 
my responsibilities to make change, to provide for others. And I believe as countries that claim to be established on Christian principles, we must ask ourselves the same thing. Because a nation of Christians, a nation established on the principles of Jesus Christ, on the teachings of Jesus Christ, on the call of Jesus Christ, we would do all that we can to help those who are in need. We would jump at the opportunity to enrich the lives of our neighbors, to help them live prosperously and abundantly. We would be quick. We would be quick to stamp out the injustice in our own nations and to call others to do the same. We would be slow to react with anger and violence against others. We would be mindful of the pain and the suffering we are causing. We definitely have the means to do more for the people of our nations, those who are in need, and to do more for the people that live around us, our neighbors, regardless of where they come from, what language they speak, or what God they, they worship, or whether or not they worship at all. We have the means, as Prime Minister Motley so boldly expresses, we have the means to make real, world-transforming change. Why aren't we accepting the responsibility? Maybe it's time we end the charade. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And as I, and I pray, I pray that the words of this prophet will speak to us, will call us, will ask us to reflect upon ourselves and upon our nations. That the words of this person, Prime Minister Motley, will drive us to accept our responsibility. Amen. Nemultus.